My coverage of CES 2018 from Las Vegas, Nevada is brought to you by Cooler Master, Enermax, OCZ Toshiba, and Deepcool. Well, hello everyone. I am now over at Palm's Place at the Cooler Master Suites. They're on the top floor and it's a lovely view, but we don't have any time for any of that because Cooler Master, I think, has more new products than any other place that I have been so far at CES 2018. Let's be honest, a lot of, it's been, a lot of CES 2018 has sucked. There's been nothing good. The Cooler Master has some pretty good stuff. We're gonna start over here with the CPU coolers. So let's begin over here with some new closed loop CPU coolers. And these are specifically made for uh, Ryzen Raven Ridge. No, that one is. That's a Ryzen Raven Ridge CPU cooler. So Cooler Master has been working directly with AMD to develop a cooler for the new APUs that uh, AMD will be coming out with very soon, which will have Vega and Ryzen in the same units. This one has an RGB fan and uh, it's, it's small. I imagine it will be somewhat affordable. And if you get an APU, you can put that on it and keep your APU cool. Excellent. Uh, beyond that, we have this new closed loop cooler, and this one is actually made specifically for Threadripper. So this is a Threadripper socket, and to uh, make sure that they have the best cooling possible, they've paired it with a 280 millimeter radiator. Now you might be able to see right along the edge here, the uh, actual contact copper plate that they've made is a little bit bigger to provide a little bit more contact surface area with Threadripper CPUs, which are quite large, to provide the best cooling possible. So check them out, Threadripper. This is the Master Liquid ML360 TR4 edition. Next up are brand new Master Liquid coolers, uh, ML120R and 240R on the left side. And these are updated uh, with new pump design, uh, new cap on here, and these all have addressable LEDs. So you get eight addressable LEDs in the fans, you get 12 addressable LEDs in the uh, pump block unit down there as well. And when you take off the lid, you can actually individually see all of the individually addressable LEDs. So uh, this is a new design, and they've also have a pro version of it, the Master, I'm sorry, Smart, uh, Master Liquid ML240 Smart. Um, this one is updated with an aluminum housing around the housing for the pump. And in what I think is a pretty cool effect and a really good idea, uh, if you like LEDs, of course, is they've added more addressable LEDs going up and down the side of the radiators. So uh, if you like RGB LEDs, then this is gonna be a great option for you. And definitely something I haven't really seen before as far as the accent on the radiator. If you have a side-facing radiator that's mounted at the top of a case, for example, that would actually look really cool. Here's the Master Air G100M really quickly. Uh, we actually showed this back at Computex, so I'm not gonna dwell on it too much, but just it looks like a looks like a flying saucer, for example, and it's got a direct uh, heat column. Uh, that's how it affects the cooling there. That's a fun little product. This is a new product over here that I'm actually kind of excited about. This is the Master Air MA410M. We're expecting this to be about 50 bucks, and probably not gonna be out until closer to Computex time frame. but uh, basically you have an air cooler with a push-pull configuration, RGB LEDs, as well as a really cool looking effect at the top here. Uh, they've got the Cooler Master halo, and then you can look down through it to many, many layers of the RGB LEDs going all the way down. So pretty cool effects, and uh, seems to be also a relatively affordable air cooling option that also looks really nice. Here's a quick look at the uh, Tough Gaming X series. So basically, uh, Cooler Master has paired up with Asus, and Asus likes now to put digi camo and yellow accents on their Tough line of motherboards, which makes it very challenging to find, you know, proper matching components to go along with it, but Cooler Master has you covered. They have a Tough series version of the MB500 case, as well as Tough series matching cooler in there. And so if you have a Tough motherboard from Asus, you should buy all this stuff. Oh, there's also a, a power supply. I'll show you in a second. Next up is a Q300, and we actually showed this off a little bit at Computex, but uh, it's actually becoming available now. And these are gonna be very affordable in the uh, 50 to 60 to $70 range, depending on how you get it kitted out. So on the right side, there's a Q300P, and here you can see where they've added some panels on the top front and sides, uh, handles, it's just expandable. But at the center of it is basically just a square box design. So this configuration here is called the Q300L Lite, and it's only gonna be $39.99. So you get an acrylic side panel, uh, so you can look inside. You get some nice looking mesh covers for the top and the front, and they actually have a little uh, design on them. They're talking about potentially doing custom designs on these if you were to buy them in bulk or something like that, so you can get a bunch of matching PCs. But 
For the price, it looks like a very solid case and also cool that you can have lots of upgrades and potential reconfiguration options for it. Here's some power supplies. Uh, they're updating the V-Series, V650, V550. I've used this power supply several times. They've been out for about four years now, so they're doing a refresh of them. Probably not expecting these to come out until about the June time frame, so maybe expect they launch right around the Computex. But uh, they've done some updates. They have a new, quieter 135mm fan. These are all 80 plus gold rated. They have additional CPU power connectors since uh, the new hotness is CPUs that draw lots of power, so making sure you've got set up to connect all the ones up you want. And they've even uh, made the PCIe connectors a little bit thicker. They've gone with 16 gauge instead of 18 gauge wire in there uh, for a little bit of enhanced durability. I already mentioned the collaboration with ASUS. This is the Tough Edition power supply that goes along with those other ASUS Tough Series components that I showed you there before. Again, digi camo with yellow accents. Hard to find a matching component unless you go this route. Look guys, it's the H500P, the case the Cooler Master announced in June and then came out with later in the year, and uh, let's just say the reception was not exactly what they were hoping. Thanks, of course, to Steve from Gamers Nexus, as well as some other folks who did some really in-depth testing to determine that for a case that seems like it's sort of geared towards airflow, wasn't getting quite enough airflow. So, Cooler Master, true to their word of being masters of cooling, have decided, you know what, we can't accept that. We need to make a new version of this case and update some revisions, perhaps, to address some of those issues. So, for first off, this is white, so going to be available in white. They're still working on this model. It's uh, got some revisions, possibly, to make sure that you have color matching going on everywhere and that kind of thing. But the thing you'll probably notice first and foremost is this nice mesh panel right across the front. Mesh for airflow, so those big old 200 millimeter fans can get plenty of air going back there. But wait, that's not all. Uh, they've also addressed the issue of some of the panels being a little bit too easy in some situations to remove. So this front panel, for example, they now have a little tab at the top and you can push the tab down. Uh, and it will pop off easily like that. So easy to remove, but when it's actually in place, it's gonna stay in place too. So um, I actually physically lifted this case earlier, grabbing it by the bottom there, and it held on and stayed just fine. So that's really cool. Uh, beyond that, we also have the same interior layout as before, although they have uh, changed up the power supply area just a little bit. You still have that uh, sliding panel there to accommodate potential front mounting of radiators and that kind of thing. But actually around the back, uh, they actually created one of those little power supply bracket mounts so you can mount the power supply from, the, from there and you don't necessarily have to remove the power supply shroud in order to get at that. They're still making final decisions with this case. For example, they're not sure if this back fan is gonna be black or white or something in between. Uh, but finally, they've also added a screw that holds the top panel on as well and it does a really good job. It's just a simple addition uh, to keep that in place. So just a little thumb screw, pop that off, and then you can remove the top piece easily as well. This is probably gonna be available in the original black, uh, the gray graphite color, and then they're working on this white version as well. And then they also have a master, a master version of the, of the H500P. We'll get to that in a second. And next up here is our first look at the Master Plus Plus software. It is Master Plus with a plus on the end. The plus is silent though, I'm being told. I'm getting a look right now. Uh, being demonstrated by Tommy, Tiny Tom Logan. And, uh, oh hey, what's up Tom? But basically Cooler Master has designed this software to be a functional and useful utility. Uh, it's also tied into the cloud, so it does actually some of the storage of different profiles and that kind of thing on the cloud, and allows you to share between profiles as well. Uh, they have a actually timeline-based, uh, it appears, solution for setting up different RGB configurations. Uh, and they've also coordinated so that it's coordinated it so you can actually see the devices that are hooked up in there. So it gives you a list of those. This actually seems like some pretty useful, but also somewhat complex software. So I kind of want to get it, get my hands on it and dive in and, and see what it can do and, and how it works and all that good stuff. But the quick demo they have showing it here is just how they've set up some custom RGB profiles so that the different lights in the case will all sync up. Uh, the case we're looking at over here on the right, by the way, is the new Cooler Master MC500M. This is the master case update. Uh, they've they've reduced the price. It's only going to be 169 bucks now instead of, uh, I believe that's about a $30 price drop. They're also including this really cool RGB LED panel that goes down at the bottom. It's going to come with a couple RGB LED fans uh, from the front and then uh, that rear RGB 
fan is actually going to be a non-RGB fan when, in, the, in the final version of that. So um, that's that's. But you can't add it, of course. You can always add a fan. And lastly, got to point out that they have finally added a USB Type C uh, to USB 3.1 Gen 2 port on the top there as well. And they're still even maintaining uh, three USB 3.0 ports alongside that. So very nice configuration. So here's an example of the Master Plus software being used for something that's a little bit more practical than just RGB LED controls. Uh, they're actually pairing it up with the Master Watt 1500 power supply here, doing some overclocking, and uh, they're, you can view the overclocking stuff going up on the monitor up there, and the Master Plus software will show you actively uh, stuff like what's going on with your power supply, how much power it's drawing, uh, can show you temperatures and that kind of thing. But if you're overclocking, though, there's a decent chance that uh, your system is going to crash at some point because uh, if, if, if it's not, then you're not overclocking hard enough. Uh, a unique thing that they've been doing with the MasterBot 1500 here is they've actually got it paired it up with a Raspberry Pi unit, and then that is feeding uh, the, inf the, the data real time over to another system. And that way, if you're live streaming your overclocking, you can actually show people what's going on even if the system crashes. And um, from what I'm told, that helps uh, prevent people from asking questions over and over and over again about what settings you were using when the crash happened. So overclocking systems over there, there's our Raspberry Pi units, and then we're also feeding over to this system over here, uh, which is also set up up for, up for overclocking. But then finally, uh, they're using an additional piece of software called Overlay.Live, the uh, Master Plus software, and it can have a lot of information being displayed on the screen and also saved, captured, and uh, shown to the people watching the live stream so that they can see exactly what you're doing and maybe figure out how high-end overclocking actually works. And over here in this room where there are lots of people milling around, they actually have a very expansive demo going on, again with the Master Plus Plus software. They have uh, a bunch of panels connected up on the wall, an LED strip down at the bottom. They've got huge banks of fans going on on either side, and then even a couple more panels on the left and the right side. So basically you got a whole room lighting experience going on here. And when they play a demo, it basically reacts to the stuff that's on screen. So this could be really cool for display at an event somewhere or something like that. Or if you have this set up, say, to an HTPC at home in your home theater, you can have ambient lighting that matches up to the content that you're watching on screen. Again, this is all connected up to the cloud, so if you create specific profiles, you can share them, you can download them. If someone created an awesome holiday profile or something like that, just go ahead and download that and plug it in so you don't have to necessarily go around and tool with it yourself. But again, hopefully I'm going to get a chance to try out the software in the future and give you guys a better idea of how it works. But it seems like they've done a really good job with it, at least at first glance. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys was a new keyboard that they're working on. It's probably not going to be out until about Computex time frame, so maybe June, but it's called the MK851. And they're trying to make a, sort of a new take on the keyboard. Granted, it's a keyboard, so there's not a whole lot you can do, but uh, they've added a couple of precision rollers up at the top left uh, that feel really nice. They can be used by default for volume, but you can reassign them as well. Uh, they, of course, got all the specs you would, you would expect. Uh, Cherry MX Red switches on this, and that is very specifically because the very unique thing about this keyboard is you can push a switch, and that will set eight keys right around the ASDW area to analog mode, which means that it will detect how far down you depress them. So if you're playing a racing game for acceleration or that sort of thing, or anything where you need more precision than just the on-off of a typical key switch, you can do that, which is a great option for gaming. Beyond that, it's a really cool looking design overall. Uh, they're going to finish it with a sort of black brushed metal uh, top plate, so that's still in the works. And it's got a Type-C connector at the bottom, so oh my gosh. So nice that we're seeing lots more Type-C and lots of the devices we have out today. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my coverage here from the Cooler Master Suites at Palm's Place. A big thank you, of course, to Cooler Master for sponsoring my CES 2018 coverage, as well as my other sponsors, Enermax, Deep Cool, as well as OCZ Toshiba. Thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. Hit the thumbs up button, and we'll see you in the next one.